First off, I just want to say if you ever thought about becoming a patron, right now you can save 10% by becoming a patron for a year. You save 10% and then that way down the line, if you can't afford monthly payments, then you're already involved in all the giveaways for the next year. So you can do one lump sum payment for the year. You're in 12 giveaways and then you don't have to worry about it in the future and you save 10%. Also, Thank you to all the patrons for supporting our channel and making it what it is. We couldn't do it without you guys. Let's get to the video. Bang! Neebs and Abs. I'm Jared. My lovely wife, Kara, is busy. And in this video, we are doing the Quiet Carry Waypoint. Let's get right into it because there's a lot I got to talk about. So, first off, I want to thank Kara, my lovely wife, and Mr. Amazing because... I was wanting this knife. I was so jealous for everybody that had them. I was super jealous, and now I have one of each. Thank you, thank you so much, um, Mr. Amazing, and obviously, thank you to my lovely wife. So, Welcome. hey, you shut up back there. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> um, all right, so right off the bat, <clears throat> After getting these, they did take a little bit of breaking in because they, they're a little tight in the pivot and they do take some breaking in. I did not take them apart, but I pro I might have to take them apart soon. I didn't because I want to show something in this video that happened, but uh, they do break in eventually very, very nicely. Um, the action is really nice on them. I personally wouldn't compare them to a rat, but the, the longer I have it and the more smoother it gets, the more I want to. Because at first, the, the thumb studs are a little pokey and a little annoying because they are kind of small, but they wind up... The action, like, I feel like I get, like, really good leverage when I kind of go like this. Like, I kind of... I drop this finger and bring this finger up at the same time, and that just seems to really launch it now you can flip it out like that or just straight up you just basically want to put your thumb there follow the track put your thumb there build some tension and then as soon as it breaks the detent that's when you like what people would say like flicking a bean or flicking a marble tension as soon as it breaks bang pop it up and it works really good the fit and the finish on these are done very, very well. Centering's great. These are kind of slick. We'll get to the bad here in a moment. Now, I did do a full sharpening video on this knife. So if you want to check out the sharpening on this knife, I'll link it down in the description. You can watch the whole thing. Um, other than that, now, everything is well done on this knife for the most part. Um, the clip works great in and out of the pocket no resistance you don't have to hold your, the liner of your pocket or anything you one hand put it in and out of the pocket you can get right to it flick it out and it just works incredibly well no problems in and out of the pocket love the clip it is a reversible clip as you can see now let's talk about the blade the blade this is the beautiful part because the handle and the blade match. And I keep talking about this in a lot of videos. In a lot of videos, I talk about the knives. So many knives are made and they just don't make sense. They do not make sense. It's like they'll make a little tiny knife or a little tiny handle, like a small knife, with a hard use blade and grind. That just doesn't make sense. You're not going to go chop wood and bricks and pry and scrape with that knife. So why do you need that thick of a knife or thick of a blade, I should say, and thick of a grind? In this example, they did it great. This is exactly the way knives should be made. They did exactly how and this isn't a big knife let me just say that and we'll get to the size and all that here in a second but it was a little, it was a little bit smaller than i thought but the point is it's a compact edc knife so the grind and edge should be fit for edc use the blade is super thin love the thinness of the blade it's 90 thousandths which here let's compare it to the spider co paramilitary 2. look at the difference in the thickness there it is so much 
thinner. Now, let's talk about behind the edge thickness. This one was between 10, well, between the two, between 10 and 14 thousandths behind the edge. Super thin behind the edge, and it's got a tall hollow grind. So even though I sharpened it, it did not change thickness. The thickness is still the same as before. And if I sharpen it a few more times, it'll still be the same thickness. So that's awesome. So since this is not a big, hard use, you know, palm filling knife, the blade should pass through materials very easily. And that's what they did here. They gave you a blade that cuts like a dream. It cuts like a champ. Let's show some cutting because I did take these both to work. Now there was some issues, but we'll talk about that in a minute. Let's just talk about some cutting. So the cutting performance is phenomenal. It just, it blazes through materials. It's very easy, out of the pocket, flick it open, get it right to work, and it just passes through. And since they did the blade, if you look at the edge, you have a full length of the edge. This blade is three and a quarter inches long, and you have cutting edge the entire way. So when you go to cut, materials your edge is right there hitting it it's already going through you don't have to worry about it jamming up on anything and you can always cover this little spot up with your hand since it's not a flipper but even back here it's very easy to just do re repeat cuts over and over and after testing with both of them and cutting with both of them and really getting some really good cutting in i i just i and finding how great this thing performs and, perform, and cutting performance. It performs so good. Now, the, the utility use, you can do the pinch and, you know, do the, the one finger like that. Or you could just do the pinch like this. But either way, the utility cuts work really well. This tip is very fine and very acute and penetrates really good. So utility cuts are amazing. This is a knife that you can get by with slicing, push cuts, and utility cuts all in one as an EDC knife should. It should be capable of doing everyday tasks. So, um, so yeah, the cutting performance is great. Utility cutting is great. The ergos, the, um, the ergos are really neutral, which I like. It doesn't force you in any position. Now, the one finger choil, now that doesn't ever bother me on a knife because my finger is going to go there anyway. So I don't really, it doesn't bother me. But for the rest of my fingers, it doesn't force me into any grip. So I have the choices to use the knife how I feel fit. I like that. It is very thin. So it's not going to be the most comfortable knife in the hand, but because the blade and thickness and grind is so thin, it passes through materials nice and easily, which in return makes the, the knife work really good for the ergos it has. And that's wh where I'm talking about that the blade matches the handle. It's appropriate for it. Now, if this grind was super thick, super thick blade, this would be horrible. It would not cut good. Not only would it not cut good, but it would be horrible in the hand. It would feel like crap in the hand. But because they did it right, it works great. Now, I know a lot of people, you know, this is a stain or rust proof knife. And that is one of like the biggest things with it. And we'll talk about that for a second. But I think there are a lot of other attributes about this knife that make it great. Other than that it's just rust proof. But it is Vanex steel, which is supposed to be a rust proof stain resistant super steel. It's supposed to have extreme edge retention. We'll get into that in a second. But it's supposed to be an incredible steel that doesn't rust. Now you have a titanium frame. So on one side, you can see all the mill pockets that they put in there to bring down the weight on this side. And then on this side, they have the liner, which so what they did was they milled this all out to fit a liner. And you can see the liner there. There's a couple screws holding it in. And that liner is LC200N. LC200N steel has been seen on a lot of knives as the blade steel because it is a good knife steel. It's very, it's rust proof. So you see it on like the Spyderco Chef. Um, it was also on some Kaiser knives. We had a couple. I've sharpened it many times. Um, I know I have a knife around here with it, um, with the blade steels LC200N. But they used it as the liner in this case, which is really cool. And so you have the LC200N liner 
that you know that goes to the lockup of the blade and then has phosphor bronze washers and that's why it takes a little time to break in but once it does it gets incredibly smooth now that's very cool because for an edc knife it's nice knowing and having the confidence that it's not going to rust you're not going to worry about corrosion you can cut with what you want you can go wherever you want with it and you just don't have to have that sit in the back of your mind oh is my knife rust do i need to oil it do i need to take it out and check on it do i need to take it apart and make sure there aren't rust spores in the inside you don't have to worry about that with this and that's amazing now the the sound is very nice Love the acoustics of this. Um, they probably won't come come out through the camera, but or through the microphone. But it's very nice. It's it's actually different because sometimes it has a really loud pop, and then other times it's a very subtle pop. So it just depends. But if you have one, you know what I mean. Sometimes it has a really loud pop when the liner cracks and um place and then other times it's nice and subtle it just has really cool acoustics i really like that everything is knocked down really nicely it feels really good in the hand even the spine is pretty much crowned it's really just chamfered but it feels like a crown spine the jimping works good and i like that you can take advantage of the spot and get up there nice and close to the blade let's talk about some bad things really quick and then we'll get to some more good things and uh, you know uh my final opinion and some size comparisons and stuff because there were a couple bad things. So one, the edge, when I first got it, the edge looked good um, on both of them. They, it cut good, but the retention was horrible. I, I actually got nervous. Not not like actually nervous, but what I meant was for this, this review. Because from what I heard about this Van Eyck Steel is it's supposed to have extreme edge retention and all this yada yada, but it was not happening. The edge retention was horrible. It literally, I, I barely used this one and I still have the same edge on it. Well, I'll show you in a second. And I barely used it. And the, the edge was just damaged all the hell. And I couldn't, I couldn't fathom like, how does it have this bad of edge retention? And um, then this one, so because since I have two to compare it to, I was thinking, okay, let's see if this one has the same problem. This one had the same problem, not as bad as this one, but it started getting issues. Now, I probably could have honed this one back, but I wanted to make a sharpening video on it, and I did. But either way, the edge retention from the factory edge was not good after sharpening it. Now, I, I don't, I'm not very, um, I'm not very knowledgeable about Van X steel, so it's not like that I have a lot of experience with it or not or with it at all. But after sharpening it, the edge retention went through the roof. Um, from put it this way, I've used this one from with the with a fresh edge, probably three to five times as much as this one with the factory edge, and and this is since I've sharpened it. This tip still has a little bit, but it's bad. It's really bad. Um, so yes, it does need a new sharpening, and I can do that, but I wanted to leave it for this video. So that's one thing. The The factory edge uh, must have been burnt. That's the only thing I could come up with. It must have had a burnt edge. So now after sharpening it, it only took me one sharpening for this one for it to come back. Now, I can't say anything about this one yet if the edge retention will go through the roof like this one. But so far, I've been loving the way this edge retention has been performing since I sharpened it. Next thing. Um, I, this, this is very minor, but... I, I kind of wish they would have gave you just a little bit deeper of a sharpening trail. Now, I do like the way they did their sharpening trail. And what I mean is that um, it just, from the thickness of the blade, it drops straight down to the edge. Let me show you a bigger example. So, like on a spider co, right here, the plunge grind drops straight down to the edge. I like that. It goes from the thickness right here straight down to the edge. I like that um, because you don't have uh, a tapering plunge grind to deal with. And they did that on here. I like that they did that. I just wish they would have made this sharpening choil a little bit deeper. 
or it gave you just a little bit more meat right here just a little bit more edge and they could have because it's very tight right here you're never going to touch the edge and you see you have plenty of room where they could have gave you a little bit more that's not that big of a deal and also when i do sharpen it back it won't take that long but eventually it'll be like this where picture that this little notch gone right here it'll just be straight across it'll just be straight up and down and i can either put in a sharpening oil or not which isn't a problem because they did make it to where this is internal stop pin so there's nothing getting in the way of me putting in my own sharpening oil. so that's really cool i just wish they would have just made it just a little bit deeper that's not that big of a deal it's not that big of a complaint next thing my lanyard tube this one, as soon as I got it, I flicked it a couple times, and the lanyard tube just popped out. I got lucky that I caught it. Put it back in. It's been fine ever since. This one, gone. Gone off the face of the earth. I have no idea where it went, where I lost it. Might have. It, hopefully, I find it, but it just came out, and pff, I couldn't tell you where it's at. Um, I, I, I would just recommend that you would check yours when you get it. Make sure it's nice and tight. I thought this one was tight, but I don't know. I have no idea. Either way, it's gone. And the same thing happened to this one, but luckily it happened in my hand and I caught it. A um, couple more things. One, these are outsourced to China. Um, Quiet Carry is an American company that outsources their knives to China. As far as I know, they haven't released the information of who makes their knives. That to me is a negative. I want to know. And if they've released that information, I haven't heard of it. So if they have, let me know down in the comments. But as far as I know, they haven't released that information. And we already know it's made in China. So just let us know who makes the knives. Not that big of a deal. What are you ashamed of? Next thing, um, which is probably the worst one yet. Okay. So this knife, very locked up. Rock solid. Very smooth. Now I have been using this one a little bit more. Or quite a bit more. But this one has a little tiny bit of lock rock. Just a little bit. Now, can I fix it? Yes, I can fix it. So I, it's not something I'm going to send back or be that worried about. I wish they'd send me a new pin though. But it does have... And you see, I, it's not that I can't squeeze the lock bar. So it does have some lock rock. So it's just a thing. It's not that big of a deal. I can fix it, you know whatever but most a lot of people don't know how to fix that okay so i did take this one apart to try to fix the lock rock and it mostly went away but let me get into what happened so i took it all apart it's very easy to take down just the two screws this is a captured pivot there you can see the the captured uh, part on this side of the scale and the washers are actually very tiny. I do wish they were a little bit bigger. I did polish them up, polish them on a hard Arkansas stone, and then I went to a fine ceramic. I didn't want to remove too much because they're very thin, small washers as it is. Like I said, I do wish they were a little bit bigger, but I just did the surface really nice, really, really easy, and I attempted to bend the lock bar over to get rid of the lock rock now i think the lock rock could possibly be from the lock bar like i said some of it did go away but then i also realized that its internal stop pin is not press fit it's very loose inside there and you can see how it just rocks back and forth now that might be why it has that little bit i don't know i didn't take apart this one to see if this one was the same way but i might have to take it back apart and push the liner over just a little bit farther and see if i can't get a little bit more of it out um because it, it seems like it's just coming right back I, I didn't put a lot of pressure on the lock bar because i didn't think it would take much now one more negative the the hardware isn't very deep and it is a t8 a t9 will not fit in there but the t8 does have a lot of movement in the pocket clip it does not though in the pocket clip it's actually pretty tight it's actually very tight in the pocket clip but in the pivot it is very loose when it's in there and a t9 won't fit in there so 
after getting it all back together it goes back together very easily and you can see how milled the scales are in the picture in the video how you know it's very simple it's a very simplistic knife which makes it super easy to put back together you can take it apart and put it together in seconds if not like maybe two minutes all together it's very very easy um but the action did improve a little bit um i did notice that um you know, it went right to centered immediately. Um, it was a little tight around right the bat, loosened back the screw just a little bit. There's no play side to side at all. It's very tight and very smooth, probably even a little bit smoother than it was before. But, yeah, it didn't get rid of that little tiny bit of rock, so I'll have to work on it again in the future and try again so now goes to the final thing 280 295 i think it's something like that it's a between 280 and 300 dollars this is a 300 dollar knife um i know it's done very very well okay it is and i've seen knives at this price range that aren't done as well as these but they are outsourced to china outsourcing to china should bring the price down in my opinion um, these are done on a CNC machine. It, it seems like, I mean, yeah, it has LC200 and liners, but it seems like a pretty simple build. Yes, they do a lot of things right, you know, like the, the hollow grind, thinness behind the edge, and a lot of things. So I love that they did that, but I just feel like it could have been a little bit cheaper. 225 to 250 I feel like would have been a little bit happier of a range, but it is what it is, and either way, for that price, you're getting a well-done knife for the most part. Now, um, next thing. Now, I don't want to leave this video on bad terms, so let's get into some more good things. So they used T8s all the way around. I love that. It's only a two-piece construction. You see that? You got this one, then the pivot. Very nice two-piece construction. That's awesome. The build quality and chamfering and smoothness is very nice. Everything's done so well. Access to the lock bars, perfect. I love the access to the lock bar. It's very easy. It's not ever going to be a real drop shutty knife, but it is very smooth after a while. At first, it's very stiff, but like a lot of phosphor bronze knives, it just takes you know some fidgeting with, and then they will break in accordingly this one is a little bit smoother now at first this one was smoother but then i started carrying and using this one more to to check the edge retention and now this one's smoother so i can really tell and feel the difference in which you know like how they're breaking in and the differences but that's um that's really awesome i love knives that kind of break into you and let you um you know, it just kind of breaks in and ages with you. I like that. That's awesome. I love the look of it. Just a, a nice simple tool look with the stone wash. Now, these, this is a little fingerprinty, but I will say this steel cleans off so easily. I feel like it just, it cleans off so nicely. It seems like every time I get like sticky stuff on it, it so easily just cleans right off. But it is fingerprinty. Um, not that big of a deal, but it, it does uh, clean off super easy. Let's do some quick size comparisons. So the best size comparison I can come up with is the Benchmade Bug Out. They are basically the exact same size. So this knife is seven and a half inches with a three and a quarter inch blade. Great size comparison. Here is the Spider Co. Uh, Paramilitary 2 and the Spider Co. Manix 2. You can see they're both a lot bigger than the quiet carry is like i said this is not a big knife um here is another quick size comparison and we'll just call it the last one here is the hinder xm18 three inch it's close but the, the quiet carry is a little bit longer this knife has kind of a tapering um deal going this one's nice and straight but you can see the quiet carry is a little bit longer than it. This one's the flipperless one. So, all in all, love the knife. Um, I think it. Uh, I think that. I think it's. It's a great example of how knives should be with cutting performance in ergos and 
what it's meant to be. This is meant to be an EDC knife, and it does that well. And this is something that I keep advocating for in the community. Make the knife make sense, right? I Don't give me a, a knife that I can barely wrap my hands around because it's so thin and small, but yet it has the spine and the edge thickness of an axe. Don't give me, um, you know, and there's a lot of knives that are very hard use that have amazing grinds. Um, I was actually talking about this with Lavender Pants recently. Like, for an example, the Code 4. The Code 4, this is a very hard use knife with a very strong lock, but yet it has an amazing grind. You don't see too many of these running around with broken blades because they were so hard used that the blade just snaps on them, yet they have a great example of a, a good grind on a knife that's hard use. They can, they don't have to, and I, let me just say this, I know it saves them money to, to not thin out a grind so much or, you know, whatever, but this is a clear example of one that's done right wouldn't it be awesome to see a full-size version of this like about the size of the rat one wouldn't that be an amazing knife exactly the same as this just this size that would be incredible i would love to see quiet carry do a knife like that that would be amazing a full-size knife with the same grind same everything just a bigger size Woo! You have the grind that matches the, the handle and the ergos. Now, I'm not saying these ergos are fantastic. I'm saying that they work. They work good. But because the blade and grind is so thin, it passes through materials nice, which in return makes the ergos feel decent. And, you know, it is a thin knife. It's not made for, for I mean, you can get away with, you know, um long duty cutting i guess you could say but if it did have a thick grind you couldn't because it would hurt your hand anyways all in all love the knife a lot i'm very blessed and happy to have gotten both of these and i'm probably going to trade one of them and get another knife on here so i can do a review and then possibly give it away or We'll see what happens. I can't promise that, but um, I was blessed to get two of these thanks to my wife and Mr. Amazing. So one of these are probably going to get traded, and so I get another knife on board. And I, I, could, I wouldn't be able to do these things without all the support from people in the community that donate things that that just bless us so much. And and without my wife. I couldn't do it without her. I love all you guys. Thank you guys for watching. Peace.